Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So we have a new format in today's video. We have good audio. We have good video quality, which is pretty epic. So this is going to be a good video, and we're going to do more videos in this format leading up to the 2022 midterms. This does not mean that I'm going to be abandoning my old format. Of course, I'm going to use them interchangeably and we are going to go from there. But this video is gonna build off of the last video. You don't have to see the last video to understand this video, but you probably should watch the last video when you're done watching this video because not that many people saw it. But I had to double upload because of the fact that Republicans don't understand politics and they keep screwing their base over on purpose as a result because they don't represent the interests of their base. They care more about being liked by people in Washington that absolutely hate them and absolutely hate their voters, then they actually care about winning or they actually care about results. Democrats understand that politics is a game. It's it's kind of like a team sport in a way, uh, one could say, but at the end of the day, you actually have to play to win. You know, you can't just be rooting for your team when you're throwing interceptions nonstop like the current Republican Party always does. You actually have to win. You have to reward your friends and punish your enemies politically. Of course, we understand this. Democrats do that all the time. Republicans, I think, are starting to get it. We see more and more America first Republicans rising the ranks. You see people like Ron DeSantis in Florida using political power for the benefit of the base. And as a result, Florida is moving to the right and Ron DeSantis is wildly popular. So you take all of these things and you put them into perspective. What is the actual winning strategy? Is it the winning strategy of years past where you just only talk about tax cuts and nothing else? Or is it America first? Is it intervening in foreign wars, but maybe will reduce your taxes by 5%? Or is it a strong immigration policy and putting the people first of this country instead of the people of my Ukraine, right? This is the real question. What is America first conservatism and what is establishment conservatism? Most people know already. But for those who don't understand, America first conservatism focuses on a more non-interventionist foreign policy. Doesn't necessarily mean full out isolationism, but definitely is a lot more non-interventionist than what we are now. We also do tend to support some right-wing economic policies like lower taxes and reduced regulations, but we also understand that big business is a problem. We understand that corporate power is a problem and these woke corporations are in bed with the government and they're going rogue. And we understand that our trade policy see this just nonchalant free market policy without any tariffs or anything is destroyed in part American manufacturing. We understand that when it comes to immigration, we are not just anti-illegal immigration. We are actually just anti-immigration as a whole. We want to reduce the number of legal immigration significantly as well as ending illegal immigration because we want to put the people of this country first. And when the people of this country are not being put first, we need to put all of the focus that we can on them so we could fix the problems at home before we fix anything else abroad. And also, we don't cave on social issues. We don't cave. We understand that a slippery slope is a real thing. It applies to the alphabet agenda. It applies to a lot of these woke leftist Marxist movements that they've been shoving down our throats for decades upon decades now. And it's only going to get worse from here. But the GOP establishment, they cave on that. They're weak on illegal immigration too, even. I mean, they want to give out free amnesty. They want to intervene in every single foreign conflict that they possibly can get their hands on. And this is an absolute massive disaster. And Joe Biden is the most America last president that we have ever had in this country's history. And the way you counter that effectively is not by playing into his hands on every issue, but just saying, haha, let's go Brandon every five minutes. No. It's by actually taking a stand and being America first unabashedly. Look at immigration. Uh, we're mainly going to focus on illegal immigration talking about Biden, but obviously legal immigration should still absolutely be reduced. Trump put a moratorium on legal immigration for COVID. Biden, day one, got rid of it because he wants more voters. He wants more power. We know that. But when it comes to mass immigration, we've had 4 million illegal border crossings during Biden's presidency so far. A million of those people have been apprehended and released into cities, mainly in swing states, by this administration. This is a problem. You look at Arizona, 
Texas, I mean, South Texas even, where it's like 85% Hispanic, but a lot of them are Tejano. They've lived here for generations upon generations. You see Republicans winning mayoral elections down there. You see Republicans flipping congressional districts that they have never won in history because the border is a winning issue. Myra Flores ran a campaign uh, title, I believe her slogan was God family country, and she talked about why immigration was a problem, and as a result, she was able to win voters. As a result, Republicans will say, we need a cave. We're going to win Hispanic voters if we give amnesty, and it's like you give amnesty and you don't even get 40%, whereas you have Republicans that are strong and run good campaigns, and they're actually winning some of these voters. Obviously, South Texas Hispanics are very different than Hispanics even in DFW or in California, but still, they don't understand politics whatsoever. You have to take a stand on immigration. That's going to help you with every single voting group in the Southwest, especially where it does matter. Foreign policy is another one. This administration cares more about an invasion that is taking place halfway across the globe than they care about an invasion that is taking place on our doorstep at our southern border because that is exactly what it is. It is an invasion. They will say it's not. You can't say that. That's politically incorrect. But what else do you call it? You have people that are pouring across every year by the millions. We don't know who they are. A lot of them are coming from Mexico, Central America, South America. Some of them are coming from uh, you know Africa and the Middle East. Then they'll go to Mexico and then they'll cross our southern border. I mean, there were Haitians down there. They caught Haitians crossing. They're from all over the world. We don't know who they are. And they're entering our streets as we speak because this administration is so incompetent and they're filled with Trump derangement syndrome to the point where they had to get rid of his remain in Mexico policy that was extremely effective at curtailing illegal immigration. But it's not even just the fact that they have TDS. It's also the fact that it's intentional. They're doing it for power. We understand that. They're doing it for power, not just for votes, but also you understand that corporations, the people that donate to these people, they benefit from having the pool of low-wage workers. They benefit from that too. And they'll just package it under diversity and inclusion while they're the ones that see their profit margins increasing. It's hilarious, isn't it? But that's the way that it works. We have to be America first. Stop sending money to Ukraine. $40 billion. A lot of Republicans too. I mean, Mo Brooks lost his runoff in part because he voted for the aid to Ukraine. He had a very America first foreign policy record his entire career, but he played bad politics. He voted for the aid to Ukraine and the establishmentarian candidate Katie Britt was able to outflank him from the America first right on the issue. And you see how that works. America first is the winning strategy for 2022. Stop focusing on Ukraine. Start focusing on our border, which actually matters, not some non-consequential conflict that is very nuanced and that is happening halfway across the globe. And also we're involved in that too. And they will say, hey, you're not, you know, we're not, we're not actually putting boots on the ground, but A, we're funding the boots on the ground. We're giving them equipment. We're paying billions of taxpayer dollars, tens of billions a year. And also we're not buying Russian oil anymore. And gas prices are going up because of it. Russia's enjoying their 99 cent gas right now, but we're not, obviously. Uh, we understand this. And I don't want to focus on buying oil from other countries. I don't want to be reliant on Russia. Don't get me wrong. But Biden won't even drill here. He won't drill here. And as a result, gas prices are going through the roof. And it's only getting worse, especially because of the conflict that is happening. You have inflation out of control. We have a problem here. What are our leaders focused on? They're focused on Mo 1-6. A lot of Republicans included the neocons in the party and they're on their way out. Uh, and they're also focused on Ukraine. They don't care about our southern border. You never hear about it in the mainstream media, even conservative mainstream media anymore for a specific reason. And when it comes to social issues, all they do is cave. They don't do anything. You look at our society. We are in shambles. We are a godless society now. You have drag queen story hours in every big city, even in red states. You have anti-white Marxism that is being taught throughout every single curriculum in this country almost. And Republicans are finally waking up on this issue. It was a winning issue. Whatever you think of Glenn Youngkin in Virginia, he's not like this America first Republican, but he ran a very good campaign that was very anti-indoctrination. And he won in a Biden plus 10 state on the issue of indoctrination and getting rid of anti-white Marxism in our education system, better known as critical race theory. So you understand how this works. We have to use power, the power that we have to advance our agenda, because that is what the opposition does to us. And if we are too afraid to wield power, we are going to lose. And that also brings us to the last point that I wanted to make in this video. Use any power that we can to curtail woke capitalism. Ron DeSantis has done a great job of this against Disney 
in Florida. We understand that. He also has punished corporations that have enacted uh, workplace jab mandates. You have to understand that we need to use the power that we have. We win elections for a reason. We have been winning elections in this country for the absolute longest time. We have won more elections since like 1952 than we have lost. It's not even close. So how have we gotten less conservative as a society? How have we lost our country? How have we lost control of every single institution? Because we have been psyoped by the Reaganites, psyoped by the neocons into believing that conservatism is only about low taxes and small government. It's like this weird crossroads of where neoconservatism meets libertarianism. You know, you have this interventionist foreign policy. Uh, you have mass immigration, you have globalism, but you also have this notion and tendency to cave on every single social issue. And as a result, we're losing our country and we need to stop it because I'm sick of it. If Republicans want to win, they have to energize their base. They have to energize their voters. They have to tap into the market of disaffected voters that have never come out and voted for them, but might be sympathetic to authentic conservative ideas. And they need to get them out to vote. That is how you win 2022. That is how you win 2024. That is how you win every single ensuing election. You don't sit here and pander to groups that are never going to vote for you. You don't sit here and cave in on every single social issue like gun control so you can maybe get like five suburban women in the country who otherwise may have not voted for you to vote for you. No, absolutely not. You know what you need to do? You need to go out there and be just unabashedly unwavering in your convictions. And if you're able to do that, we are going to win as many elections in this country as possible. You're going to win states that you otherwise would not have thought about. Remember Donald Trump? Remember Trump came along in 2016. He said, we're going to win Michigan. We're going to win Wisconsin. We're going to win Pennsylvania. Uh, like people looked at him like he was crazy. I, I mean, even on the right, these right wing strategists said, no, he's not. You know, he's not going to, he's not going to win. He's unable to win. He can't win in Virginia and Bush won Virginia and he can't win Colorado. So he's not going to be able to win. You know what Trump did? He went out there and he wiped the floor with Hillary Clinton. He won Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. He won Ohio and Iowa by almost 10 and he almost won Minnesota. And in 2024, he's going to win all those states, probably adding Nevada, probably adding New Hampshire, maybe even Maine at large, because Biden's administration is so unpopular. But that is if he runs a good campaign and doesn't run a campaign that's going to pander or cave or just lose the America first energy that he had in 2016. So anyways, guys, keep this all in mind moving forward. We have a very important election to win that's going to be coming up in about four or five months or so. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below. And also check the pinned comment uh, to join my website and buy my merch. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.